Good morning. Thank you for coming. Uh, the prosecutor would like to explain our views on the decisions. For me, the first point to remark here is that the judges yesterday announced publicly the decision to affect for a crime who affected many people and where the court decided that there are senior leaders in Kenya that had to go to trial. There was no problem in Kenya and even the persons charged with the crimes explain they still believe they're innocent but they explain they will keep cooperating with the court. I think it's remarkable. I think it's, imagine if in your countries, the most important leaders of the government and the oppositions are prosecuted. How would be? And this happened in Kenya in a perfect way. So I found this remarkable. I think uh, the Kenyan ruling, the, the yesterday ruling has a, is very important in different dimensions in the way analyze the, fact that the facts and identify individual responsibilities at this stage, but also in the way it's helping Kenyans to move ahead. Let me go to the facts. Important. Now we have judges confirmed, confirming that uh, the first act of violence committed in Kenya after the elections were planned for months by an organization created and led by some of the ODM party, Mr. Ruto and others. So that's crucially important. They triggered the violence in Kenya with crimes committed after a careful plan. And the judges also found that senior members of the government organized retaliatory attacks. These are critically important to understand what happened in Kenya. If you read the political analysis on those days, no one understood that the violence was planned. And of course, it was triggered by the decision, but they were planning to do it even in any other conditions. So, this was a, a plan attack, and now it's clear. In terms of legal issues, I think it's crucially important, the dissidents, because uh, what the judges are debating is something that was established in, New in Nuremberg. Nuremberg, for the first time, established the concept of crimes against humanity that include that the member of the government, the government can attack people in its own country, and it's not just a national crime. It's a crime against humanity. And that what the judges are debating. What is a threshold? When atrocities are just a national crime, and when the crimes are so big that in concern the international community, been in Kenya, been in Libya, been in Cote d'Ivoire. So that is the legal debate this case is promoting. And it's interesting because this is a type of judicial activity of the court. In this sense, there's no difference with any other court in the world. The judges review the facts and apply the law. The law is for everyone. The law is for humanity. That's why it's so relevant. But different than other courts, the court is also making a difference in Kenya. Because uh, uh, in Kenya, the court is helping to move to a peaceful time during this electoral year. And I would say that is the consequence of the activity of the African Union led by Kofi Annan, who helped to establish peaceful in Kenya. But also is the consequence of the political leaders in Kenya for the last four years, they made this miracle. Uh, they had this coalition government who are working together when they, in the past, were attacking each other. So Kenya peaceful and, and system, Kenyan peaceful life in the last year was a result of this political commitment 
and the court is enforcing that, allowing a discussion was very difficult to do it inside Kenya, who responds over the crimes. Um, in this sense, I like to recognize that the suspect attitude contribute to this. The fact that they came to the court and they were before the judges helped to have this debate. Without them, it would be impossible. Also, I think it's very important the words of President Kibaki yesterday. President Kibaki said very clearly that he explained the commitment to help the victims. They are still victims of the post-electoral violence who are still displaced. They should receive help now. There is no need to wait for a conviction to start to help them. That's why the President Kibaki commitment is very important. And it's also showing the national government has still many activities to do, including protecting those victims who can be witnesses. We're concerned about that, and we'll go back to this point. So let me go talk to you about the future. Um, we will keep investigating the intervention of these two persons who were, the, the judges were not confirmed. So the, the reason not to confirm the charge against Mr. Koski was because we just we have one witness, and the judge considered one witness not enough. So we'll keep investigating this. And in the case of Mr. Ali, the judges considered that it was not proved that the police gave a free zone in the cities. And we believe that happened, so we'll keep investigating that. And in the same way, we're keeping investigating what happened in, in Kibera and Kisumu, where allegedly members of the police were shooting civilians. So we'll keep our factual investigation, but we will not appeal the decision. We consider it's a very good decision, so we will not appeal the decision, and we will prepare for trial. In preparation for trial, for us, the main concern is to the protection of witness. In particular, if now we, until now, we have no witness in Kenya. We decide to investigate outside Kenya. We collect witness connecting this, the high-level people with the facts, but now, we know who are the victims, and we should move to investigate through the victims, the crime-based people. And that requires a lot of effort in Kenya to protect the witness. And that's something we'll talk to them, because it's, it's basically Kenyan responsibility to protect its own citizens. However, some of the suspects have stated that they will appeal the decision. And we should respect this right. Some people will be frustrated because maybe this delay the beginning of the trial. But uh, I think this decision yesterday show the activities of the court are important. Each step is important. Maybe I don't know when will be a trial and a decision, but the yesterday decision is crucial, and maybe it's what we need to have a peaceful election. And we'll see when the trial starts, because. We respect the right of the suspect to appeal the decision. We'll see what they say. And the judge had to, you know, the pre-trial chamber shall decide, grant or not, the leave for appeal. So this is still a long journey, still many steps ahead, but yesterday was a milestone. So we keep working. We'll see the arguments of the defense. We'll see what the judges say and we'll see if this goes to appeals, and if this happens, maybe the trial will not start immediately. But in some way, this is also the time for Kenyans to take leadership. This, is, this problem is basically a Kenyan problem. We, African Union through Kofi Annan, and the panel of eminent personalities and the court is helping them to move, but this is a challenge for Kenyan. They have now electoral process. They can discuss the past. In my country, Argentina, in, in 1983, we had elections, and then the, the candidates debated what to do with the, form, with the past crimes. 
and some of them propose amnesty, some of them propose trials, and he won. <laughs> so that is a debate in Kenya, because we have trials against some individuals, but of course there are other people, and some of the victims are frustrated because the, the low-level perpetrators are not prosecuting here, will not prosecute them, so that's the debate for Kenya. How far, who will do the other cases, when will happen, how you integrate different tools to reconciliate Kenya. That's the Kenyan leadership, not us. And that's why I think this time that maybe we are using to debate legal arguments in the appeal chamber should be used in Kenya to decide how to move forward. It's a Kenyan decision. So that is our analysis of the, of the case today, but we are open to have a question from you. My name is Joe Agay from NTV Kenya, and I just want to find out what your reaction is to indications back in Kenya that the government may be preparing to bring again the admissibility challenge that they tried earlier on in the case because they say that there has been a new constitution in Kenya, the judiciary there is perhaps now better prepared to deal with uh, whatever crimes may have been committed uh, in the post-election period. Kenya has the right. Uh, however, a challenge of admissibility had to prove first the case in Kenya is against the same people for the same incidents, for the same crimes. And additionally, it had to prove that it's a genuine case. That is the, what they had to prove. I just wanted to ask you a little bit more the protection of witnesses in Kenya um, and make sure that I understood you correctly by saying that there are no witnesses in Kenya. What do you mean by that, and um, how concerned are you that witnesses will be protected in this trial? We have a duty to protect our witnesses. So what we did at, until today is to select few witnesses, the key witness, and w knowing that there are so many victims that it's easy to prove the, those, to have a sample who represent the victims, of the direct victims of the crimes. However, to go to trial, we'll present them. But then we had to find a solution, how to manage that. And I think uh, until today, we had no witness in Kenya, and we're concerned because, for instance, it's, it's famous in Kenya, one individual who was a victim, and he was saying he liked to be our witness. We never interviewed him, so he's not our witness, but he disappeared. So that is hugely concerned for us. This could not happen, and Kenya had to manage that, and this person had to appear. My name is Alex Chamada from Citizen TV in Kenya. There have been reports that some of your witnesses have been hostile, they're not cooperating. Is that the case? No, we, we ha until today we, have a, we are managing our witness in a proper way. Nothing happened against them, that was our goal. As you know, there's a unit separate from the prosecutor office who protect the witness. So we're not involved in the daily, the, in the, in the daily activity of them. But I think uh, the bottom line is all the wins are protected and the details are confidential. Uh, the judges did not confirm charges against Henry Koske and Hussein Ali. In short, they sort of exonerated the police of any blame in, in the violence. But part, most of your case was actually uh, concerns the violence that, or the acts of the police during the post-election violence. So how does this uh, affect your case going forward? In the case against the leader of the ODM, we found different witnesses talking about the role of Ruto as a lead, as a leader of the organization who committed the crimes, and some supporting. And we have one witness who say also that Koski was involved in the planning. And the judge considered this one witness is not enough to go to trial. We need more witnesses. So it's not affecting the entire organization, it's just affecting the Koski participation. We are trying to see if we can get more evidence, but this is a situation, so it's not affecting the others. In, in the case of Mr. Ali, we would consider that the police uh, was providing free zone to the Mungiki to commit the attacks. And that's why one of the reasons, the strong reason we consider Mr. Ali was involved. However, the judges consider this has not happened. So we should have, we need to have more evidence to present that clearly. But also we are <coughs> uh, checking 
the, what happened in Kibera and Kisumu, because that was our initial uh, point, and we like to go back to that, because uh, many people in Kenya feel that, that the police was involved in the crimes, and that's why we are checking that. It's still it's complicated, because the, the judges consider prove it that the members of the Mungiki receive police uniforms. So that's why it's complicated. But we also believe there are some leaders of the police involved. So we're keeping investigating the crimes. But in any case, the judges consider the meetings that we prove show with the intervention of Mr. Kenyatta and Mr. Musaura in the planning of the attacks. Most people who are on trial are actually in detention. Um, these uh, suspects, the Kenyan suspects, are still free. Um, can you foresee any arrest warrant or that people will be detained at some point? The judges confirm the conditions and the suspect confirm they will come when it's needed. So it's a judge's call and they decided. So for the trial, for you think they can yes, go, go back and forth? That's what the judge decided. You mentioned that the investigations would continue. Can you, can you tell us more detail about how your investigations into the case against Mr. Koske and Mr. Ali will continue? Or, uh, and how the police are responsible? We try to see, to know more about the planning of the ODM leadership on attacking, and then we'll see we got more evidence against Mr. Koski. And we are committed with Kibela and Kisumu because we believe it's very important to analyze this two incident too. So we're trying to spend efforts to analyze this. You say that you won't appeal the decisions concerning Koski uh, and Muhammad Ali, yeah. um, and will continue um, investigating. Um, if your investigation turns up new evidence, yeah. will you then reopen yeah. these cases? Um, and is there a particular time when you can do that? that? That is the concept. The concept is the decision of the judges to exclude these two individuals was based on factual analysis. So what we need to do now is to provide more evidence to overcome this obstacle, and then we present, we request a new confirmation of charges eventually. That's the process. So we don't need to go again to the appeal. We don't need to go to the appeal. We have to go again to the pretrial chamber to request a new confirmation of charges. Uh, prosecutor, what's your view on the prospect now of two men who have been charged with crimes against humanity standing for president in the forthcoming election? Up to the Kenya to decide. No, we have no man I have no mandate to be involved in the national decisions. This, this is a national issue. That's the point. We have a mandate to investigate crimes against humanity. These crimes affect humanity. Who run in Kenya, how they do it, is a Kenyan issue. They should decide. Now, there are those who feel that continuing to comment on this matter uh, in sure? the absence of the suspects, the absence of the accused, is like insisting on their guilt and their feeling that you would rather reserve your comments to the trial stage. What's your comment on this? So I have no comment. Judges decided that the system, the regime will, will, will keep working the same way. The point is, pretrial detention is not punishment. It's not punishment. Punishment should come if they are convicted. In the meantime, pretrial detention is, is required when it's required, when it's needed. But the judges consider it's enough. This, this activity show they will come, so the judge decided we don't need pretrial detention. And so that's the concept. Yes, people want punishment. Punishment is at the end, not now. Are you satisfied with the cooperation of Kenya? What, what, do you, what, do you, what do you say about I would the say role of Kenya? It's very complex. I'm worried about this issue, the attackers, attack on witnesses or attack on victims. I'm very worried about that. And even if you have national leaders charging their members of the government who can be involved. So that is worrying me. So the, the protection of witnesses is worrying me. And at the same time, I see it's complex, and I see it's, it's a great day. I don't know how to use example war because I know it creates conflict in, in Kenya, but for me it's exemplary. Kenya is moving ahead. Kenya is managing. I think President Kibaki's statement yesterday was perfect. So he set the tone, they will, the country will evaluate legal issues, they will focus on protect the victims. That's exactly what we need. And I'd like if also they can focus on protection of the victim, not just in terms of recovery, 
house, but also that no one is affecting their life. I mean, you uh, due to leave office shortly. I wonder how you rate this case. Uh, some people think that this uh, is very important to your legacy, the Kenyan case. Do you look at it like that, having said in the past that you were going to make an example out of Kenya? That's maybe my wording was bad. I was not saying I would do example bad against them. I show. I, I say the intervention they call it Kenya will show how the world can manage a conflict differently. You know, in the past, the world want to invade the countries to this to clarify issues. In Kenya, was no invasion. Was the same authority, the same government. First, they made a coalition, and then they managed, and they work with us. And that is, for me, a new standard. I, I would love to have the same situation in Sudan, in Darfur. Why is different? Because in Darfur, that's why we prosecute the president in Darfur, because in Darfur, we the president order the crimes. Here is different. We have no evidence against the top authorities, and they are managing different that. In this sense, it's showing a new standard to the world. Yes, even when there are massive violence, if you have national leaders committed, and you have Kofi Annan helping them to have an agreement, you move. And then they keep moving, respecting the court. And the next move is national elections, national debate. But this is showing a different path, a 21st century model. That's why Kenya is showing a 21st century model to manage conflicts. Judge Carl has appended a dissenting opinion. Yes. And he maintains that the ICC is not competent. How confident are you? And yesterday, I remember Judge Ekaterina said that the prosecutor has the burden of proof. How confident are you that you can be able to sustain this case up to trial? As I mentioned to you, you this is a big issue because uh, normally the world is organized on the basis of national states. And then the Nazis were saying what's happening inside the Nazis, the, the Germany, is our business. So Goebbels was saying that. However, in Nuremberg, for the first time, the, the, the Nuremberg Tribunal and the prosecutors developed the idea that there are crimes against humanity because they are so serious that are not just affecting the national system, affect the international community. Because, not just because of moral principle, because cross the borders. The Nazi crimes cross Germany borders. The Rwanda genocide cross the border and destroy Congo and go to the Congo wars. And of course, the neighbors of Kenya were worried about 2012 elections because they knew if there is vi similar violence in Kenya in 2012, it would be problem for my country because people escape, uh, migration flows, all these problems. So that's why the world was developing the, this concept of crime against humanity. But because it infringe in the issues that normally are national, the, the, the threshold should be clear. The co I, I am very confident because in different other cases, this court decided what the threshold is. We have a crime against humanity, against Joseph Kony in Uganda, we have crime against humanity in different, in different situations. So, I, and in Libya, in, in, uh, in Darfur, so we believe the court is clear. But Judge Cole present a different view, and I think it's a very interesting argument, and it's important that this court define clearly when a crime is against humanity, when a crime is just against the national people. Uh, some people you will say you're very passionate about the Kenyan case compared to the rest, like you talked about Connie. Um, can you But if you go to Libya, that? they will see like I'm very passionate about Libya. And if you go to Darfur, they say the same. I believe in justice and I believe we got to help the victim to move ahead. Okay, you said that there are many steps ahead. From your experience, from the past cases you've handled, how long could this take? I mean, b before it's concluded, how long? How long can we, you know? There are different steps. We have to see if they really present an appeal. I will not appeal. So if they don't appeal, we go to trial. If they appeal, <coughs> will take one, two months to the judges of the pre trial chamber to decide because the judges should decide they leave, they grant the leave for appeal or not. And then you go to the appeal chamber and depend, the, because depend on how many people participate, depend if the Kenya government participate, depend if the victim participate. So that could take another at least five months, 
maybe one year, nine, ten months, something like that. So depend, it's a step by step to follow. That. That's why I let. Thank you for your question because I like to be clear. I'm not sure that the trial will be in, imminent, so maybe it's delay for a while. That's why I think the yesterday decision show convictions are important, but decision yesterday is crucially important because basically it's not just about the individual responsibility of the suspect. It's about what happened. It's about how we and the Kenyans are managing to discuss the violence. It's about what's the crime against humanity, what's the crime against Kenyans. So it's about all these issues. So that's why the, ke the yesterday decision was very important. When will be a trial, when will be a final decision? I don't know. Depend on many factors still. We are discussing in my office if we put together the two cases or not. So it's better to have one case against the four suspects who have two different parallel cases. So if we have a depend so the, the length will depend on both. Uh, normally we're trying to have a small cases. Normally we're trying to present 25 witnesses, but normally the cases take at least one year and a half. So that's at the time. So if you put together, probably Katanga is a good example. In Katanga, there are two suspects, but it was shorter than Lubanga trial, but still lasts like a one and a half. So probably will be at least one and a half, two years trial. That's what we have to understand. We have to understand the importance of each step. You remember, when we opened the investigation, we promised before end of 2010, we present who are the suspect, we did it, and now we have a confirmation, confirmation of charges, huge step ahead. Huge, because it's not just the prosecutor office opinion. It's the three judges evaluating hundreds of documents, evaluating the, the evidence. So now it's a different step. It's, it's still a journey, a long journey probably, but it's not just judiciary, because I think it's important what happened with the three individuals, the four individuals, but even more important how the Kenyans managed this year the electoral process. So my caller from AP again. Can I just clarify, Prosecutor, do you say you're considering putting these two cases together so all four suspects tried at one time? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's one option. We are discussing. But still, let me see what happens with the appeal, and then maybe we'll go to the trial chamber to propose that. We'll see what is more efficient. We're debating. Um, Anna Holligan, BBC. This so far has been successful for you, and there's been no violence in Kenya, which is great, obviously. Is there any way that you're using the Kenyan case as a model for the Ivory Coast in your ongoing investigations there? Kenya is different than Ivory Coast. And yeah, we're trying to see what lessons should be learned to do it better. But I also trust Ivory Coast will be OK. There is no problem in Ivory Coast neither. So we had a very violent situation one year ago, and now the situation is calm. So different, but both very important because Ivory Coast and Kenya are two big countries, too relevant for both sides of Africa. So, and in both cases, similar rule discussed. The rule, the new rule is, uh, no leader can gain power or retain power using massive violence. That is not acceptable. In Kenya, because it was a Rome Treaty state, we immediately went to the judicial proceedings, and in fact the national authorities accepted and supported. In, in Ivory Coast was a, both candidate, Gagbo and President Otara, who requested our intervention. In, in Libya, was the Security Council who decided that. Security Council decided the same. There, it's not acceptable that the leader retain power committing massive violence. And of course, you have other situations that maybe are outside our jurisdiction, and they are not yet judicial punishment, but they are political reactions. You will see Arab League involved in different conflict and trying to stop them. So I think we are not understanding. We are in a new world, changing completely. The world today is not accepting leaders using violence, massive violence, to retain power or to gain power. It's gone. If you make violence to get power, you will end in the hay. I just want to make sure you are now still uh, working on collecting further evidence for the other two, Koske and Ali, is that correct? So that you can uh, submit further evidence to the uh, judges? We have two fronts now. We are preparing for trial, mm. and so we are collecting evidence to complete the case for trial, in particular including crime-based witness, and that's why our concern is how to protect people inside Kenya. No, that's something we'll debate within Kenyan authorities. 
At the same time, we are working in the two individuals who the petrol chamber re reject our charges, and then we'll see if we can move these cases too. So we're working both sides. Thank you. Okay?